Morning, everyone. Great to have you here. There's still a few trickling in. We're going to do things a little bit different this morning. We've got a great testimony that's happened in and around our community. So I'm going to ask uh, Stuart Morrison if he can come and share that testimony. Mal, I'm going to steal him away for a moment. He's going to share something with us. Um, just, just before we do that, um, we, today, just so that you're aware, we, we've had the Young Life Youth Conference, uh, sorry, Youth Camp that took place about two weeks ago, and uh, we've just had them sharing some testimonies today. They, they shared the message as well, what was shared on camp, and then they, there will be baptisms afterwards. So if you've got time, I think we're baptizing about 14 people. If you can brave a bit of drizzle and rain, it's going to be a great time out on the lawn. We, we'll be doing it there, so I just want to give you that heads up, and then Stu's going to share a testimony with us. Morning, saints. How are you all doing? I'm just telling you, get excited because the service this morning was absolutely amazing, and God is really touching people. I just want to share um, one testimony that I actually just got right now. A um, good friend of mine just came and shared this morning how he's been completely healed of depression. God has completely set him free. And he's off all medication. He's been off for a while, and God completely healed him of depression. Right now, two minutes ago, that was just shared with me how God has healed him. Can we just get a little bit? I just want to share a quick testimony this morning. Um, I've got two clients of mine who've been coming to this church for two years. I was hoping that they would be here, and I would put them on the spot, but that might be too much, so I'm going to just share it. And they've just started praying for their family members. They've been coming here for a year. And they were doing a daily devotional um, by Andrew Omek, and he speaks of, of God's will to heal. And um, the one felt very moved to go and pray for a friend who was uh, diagnosed with stage four cancer, tumors all over the body, and, and not a very good um, diagnosis, obviously. This week, I was training the both of them. And in the session, she got very emotional and started to share how this friend has messaged her this week to say that she went back for another test to start the treatment and the doctor came back with the test and said that they cannot find any cancer or any tumors in the body. And um, <laughs> woo, Jesus, I just want to encourage you, um, whether you have got any issues going on physically, emotionally or spiritually, just open your hearts um, this morning to experience Jesus. Can we, can we do that this morning? Just come with expectation, come with boldness, because God loves you and His grace is sufficient. Amen? Bless you. Wonderful. Can I ask you to stand? We're going to enter into praise and worship. So, Lord, we just thank you that we get to come to you, and we know with you all things are possible. We've been carrying uh, things through this week or maybe through... Um, journeys of health, whatever it might be, but we come to you, the one who's not only has a solution, but that you are the answer. I thank you that you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. And I thank you, your word says, Lord, that you come with abundant life, life in its fullness. And so, Lord, I just thank you for a full, overflowing encounter with your goodness here this morning. Even as we turn our attention to you to worship you because you are deserving, I thank you that you send your spirit and Holy Spirit that you just minister to hearts in a significant way. I thank you that even as we've come here just to encounter you, none of us will leave this place without knowing that you've spoken, that you've touched, that you've ministered, that you've corrected, that you've aligned, and that you've accelerated us forward into all that you have for us. I pray that in your mighty name, Lord Jesus. And together we say, amen.
Jesus. 
Jesus, you deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, Jesus, you deserve the praise, worthy is your name.
In 2 Samuel, it says that David danced before the Lord with all his might. And I feel like this morning, God's saying there's so much freedom in this room that we need to dance before Jesus. On camp, guys, we gave the word undignified, that we need to be undignified for Jesus. And I feel like as a church this morning, we need to become undignified for Jesus. We need to have a party for Jesus. We need to go wild for Jesus. So can we have a party for Jesus? Can we go wild for Jesus and praise Him? He is worthy. He is worthy of all the praise. He is worthy. Let's praise Jesus. Jesus. Guys, teenagers, let's praise Jesus. I just heard the words balance and equilibrium. And as I watched the rain fall this morning, I saw the, the earth rose in obedience and it remained in perfect balance with the weather. 
My eyes were drawn to a small bird's nest that looked drenched on the outside, but it was warm and perfectly dry on the inside. I saw in the spirit storms raging, but rocks standing still. I saw trees buffeted by the wind, but washed clean and rejoicing in the storm. I saw a refreshing view of the storm as it brought about a cleansing and a renewing. I felt the Father say, I am bringing an equilibrium and a balance back to your life. With the weather comes new seasons, off fall the dead leaves, the dirt is washed away, the air is cleaned, and what felt choked can breathe again. Thank you, Jesus, for your cleansing now over every person here. Thank you that you bring equilibrium where people have felt off balance. Thank you, Father, that you bring the lost home, that you clean the dirty, that you give new breath to the suffocated, and you give new vigor to the burnt out. While we were worshiping now, I felt a pain in my right ear. And if there's anyone here with pain in your right ear, God is healing you right now. Thank you, Father, that you bring balance and you bring equilibrium. And we just receive that right now. Just extend your hands out to heaven. Present your request before the Father and He will grant you what it is that you are in lack of and He will give you what you need. Thank you, Jesus, that you give each and every one of us what we need right now. Thank you that you cleanse us and that you wash us. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. Your name is great and greatly to be Church, this morning we want to teach you a new song. It's called Trust in God. And as we sing it, we pray that it would build faith in your hearts to sing this in the middle of any storm, in front of any mountain, wherever you find yourself, that you would know that the Lord is trustworthy and those who hope in Him, those who trust in Him, will never be put to shame. And so we want to teach you the chorus, very simple. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior. Yes, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. You got us. Let's do it. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of His Spirit and washed in His blood. Sing, 
I trust? Oh, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Yes, I trust in God, my Savior, the one. Perfect submission. Oh, perfect submission. All is at rest. Cause I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps. So this is my story. This is my song.
Church, we're going to sing that bridge, that chorus again. But before we do, this morning I feel like there's some people who are kind of like, yeah, I'm still waiting. I'm seeking the Lord. The answer's coming. I'm trying to keep the faith. And there's other people in the room who have seen him come through time and time again. And they're like, they cannot deny that this was the Lord in this place and that place. And so those people with the testimony in their hearts, they're going to sing this again to build the faith of the ones who feel like they can't lift up their hands. Of the ones who can't see clearly. Because we could all use with some more faith, some friends who are faithful. So we're going to sing that again. But before we do, we're going to read Psalm 34. And this is the song that the song is based off. And there's just something about singing the word that realigns, that recalibrates you to the truth and to what the Lord's doing in and around you. So Psalm 34 verse 4 says, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. For the angel of the Lord is a God. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, for those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Let's just say that together. Those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Thank you, Father. What a promise. What a God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I sought the Lord. Because I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. Oh, I'm living proof that I sought the Lord.
So it's, um, <clears throat> there's moments in worship where we come together in faith as a community. Um, can you put up Dez's sound for me? If you, that's cool. When we come together as a, as a community, when faith's expressed, and we saw it on the youth camp, shout out. <clears throat> that we give God the opportunity to shatter ceilings as, as a community, but also off individuals. And just Dez, just, what, I just feel like there's something in this moment. I mean, Mel gave one of the most incredible words that was just articulated and was a picture of something so extraordinary that the Father's doing. And it's almost like we want to create an opportunity in this moment for this community to almost rest in the rain, to create some space for God to fill the space. So we're going to sing Let It Rain. Why don't you just begin to play the chords? And I just want you to just begin to just settle your heart with the Father with those words of equilibrium and balance. We're released right now. We just begin to declare heaven's reign in this room. The Holy Spirit, that when you come and when you move, there is freedom. That your anointing breaks every yoke. That your anointing has the ability to transform, to level every mountain and fill every valley, to make it every crooked path straight. So right now, we just thank you, Lord, for your rain. And we thank you, Lord, for the physical rain outside. And I just pray right now that you would begin to move in this room in a whole new way as that word was released for a new season and a new era. Let it rain, Holy Spirit. We recognize your presence. As we sing this, just shatter a ceiling. Ask God for more. Come empty and let Him fill it. Lift your hands into the sky because the kingdom of heaven has arrived. He, the kingdom of heaven arrived with Jesus and has only kept coming and He's only going to come. Lift your hands into the heavens. Let it rain. Let it rain.
I just had a picture of a, an old, I would think it would be a like, transmitter radio where someone was playing um, with the frequency to find the right sound. And it's almost like I feel like what the Lord is doing and this, one of the things he's doing this morning is he's, he's trying to tap us into the right frequency, the frequency of his presence, but also the frequency of his voice because the voice has a world and the enemy has a world and your mind has, a, has its own frequency. And it's like something of this morning where the Lord's going, okay, you've heard the wrong radio station. You've heard the wrong frequency. You've heard the lie of the enemy that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy, that you're not righteous, that you're not powerful, that where the enemies come to intimidate. There's something about a new frequency of us beginning to tap in to His voice. So Holy Spirit, we thank you right now that you would just tap us into your frequency, that you would make us more aware of you than everything that surrounds us, that every circumstance that we would face. So right now, we thank you for a stirring of a new faith in this community right now, just to begin to tap into the frequency of the one. Only your voice, only your voice. So we speak to the mountain to great grace, great grace to the mountain right now. Thank you, Jesus. Let it rain on every person, on every head and on every family. Just as we've been singing, let it rain and let his presence just fill this place. I want to say something to the young people. I felt the Lord say, he said, go and untie the cult so that he could ride into Jerusalem on that donkey. And he's saying the young people, that's a young, a cult is a young donkey. And he's saying, I'm letting you loose. You have been loosed to be carriers of his presence. He has loosed you for the much, much more. He has loosed them into this congregation that they may be a young people that will carry His presence in this place. So I just wonder if you can turn around, all of you young people, and just put your hand over, just outstretch your hand over this place and just say, just release His presence, His reign, just all who He is because you are carriers of His presence and we will be the benefit of all that you have for us in Him, in Jesus' name. So we thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. We thank you for your reign in this place. We thank you that we are loosed, we are loosed, we are all loosed to be carriers of Him. The, the bond, we are out of bondage. There's no religion that can tie us down. There's no traditions that can tie us down because we are free. 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 Chant, we are free. We are free. We are free. We are free to be carriers of His presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In your presence, like a cloud, has captured me. Your presence, like a cloud, has captured me. Your presence, like a cloud, has captured me your presence like a cloud has captured me yeah. your presence like a cloud has captured me your presence like a cloud has captured me Lord. your presence like a cloud has captured me your presence like a cloud has captured me all lies on Jesus all eyes on Jesus all eyes on Jesus all eyes on Jesus Your presence, 
deserts like a cloud has captured me. Yes, Lord. Your presence like a cloud has captured me, Lord. Your presence like a cloud has captured me. Your presence like a cloud has captured me, Lord. All eyes on Jesus. All eyes on Jesus. We look to you, Lord. All eyes on Jesus. All eyes on Jesus. We lift our eyes, we lift our hearts, we lift our hopes, we lift our fears, we lift our worries, we lift our burdens to you, Father God. We lift them all up to you. From it is you, it is you, Lord God, from where our help comes from, Father. So as we stand in your presence like a cloud, Lord God, and as we consume by you, Father God, you would come down and take all that is not of you, Lord Jesus. So we lay it before you, Father. We lay all our everythings before you, Lord Jesus. We say, Father, would you come and would you have your way, Lord God, because you are good, because you are kind, because you are faithful, Lord Jesus, and your heart is towards us every single time. So Jesus, all eyes on you. All eyes on you, King Jesus. Faithful, faithful God. perfect submission. All is at rest. I know the author of tomorrow has ordered our steps. So this is our story and this is our song. We are praising our risen King and Savior all the day long. I'm not too sure what you've come in carrying or burdened with or concerned with. Perfect submission. All is at rest. We get to trust in Him we get to turn our eyes on Him, to know that He is the one that opens up the floodgates of heaven, that pours down refreshing, revitalizing, renewing rains that carry us into the fullness of the flow of His stream of life, river of life, into all that He's purposed for us. Lord, we just, we just recognize You here and moving. We just thank You that that doesn't stop at the end of worship, but it continues in every interaction and every word spoken and everything revealed to us about who You are as you are the living word opened up. And so Holy Spirit, continue to breathe in this place and on each life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Why don't you take your seats? Why don't you greet someone near you? I know we filled up in that amazing time of worship. Thank you, team. Thank you, Naz. Mm. Yeah, we went longer than usual, but man, it was worth it, wasn't it? We had young life sharing in the first service, just what God's been doing in their youth camp, and there were testimonies and overflow, and it spilled over into this service, so we, we expectant that you're going to just have a wonderful time just hearing what God is doing, not only in young life, but in releasing new life for us as a community. And so we're going to hear from them in a moment. Um, if you're here and a guest for the first time today, um, we've got a treat for you in the coffee shop. Can you put up that uh, Nando slide that sponsored this morning? Did we have that picture? Full English breakfast for only 16, 15. Apologize, John Jennings. Sorry, I'm being very naughty. We do appreciate you. You can take that down before I get in big trouble from everyone. We do appreciate you being here. If you're a guest with us for the first time today, we'd love to connect with you afterwards for a cup of coffee. But um, just be aware, straight after the second, we're going to be on the grass. We're going to be doing baptisms. 
I think there are about 14 or 15 people. If you're wanting to be baptized, um, come and speak to us. We'd love to baptize you as well. I know that a dad has already said, my son's getting baptized today, and I want to get baptized as well. So we're going to have a great time together. If you are here for the first time, sorry, I should have said, can you raise your hand? We're going to get a voucher to you for a cup of coffee and just to provide moments that we can connect. Great to have you with us. Just keep your hand up. We'll get that to you. Um, over here, Cam, there, just keep your hands up. We'll get it to you. Great to have you with us today. Um, we do want to give time for um, bringing our offerings and um, just investing in what God's doing with us as a family to see His kingdom advance. Uh, those are ways that you can give. And we're going to go straight into video announcements. Sorry, I'm trying to rush because I, I want to give the young team as much time as possible. So if we can play the video announcements. Hello and welcome to Harvest Church. Here are this week's announcements. Join us for Burn 24-7 this coming Saturday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. at the Harbour Wall as we pray and worship over our city. We hope to see you there. Hey, I'm Craig Rochelle, and I would love to invite you to join me this year at the Global Leadership Summit. The Global Leadership Summit is the perfect place to grow in your leadership with fresh and actionable insight to help stretch you to become a better leader. This is an event that I've attended for years and honestly, it's changed the way I lead and helped my leaders grow in their leadership as well. And this year I'm honored to do the opening talk and I wanna talk about something that is a global challenge and that is that people simply don't trust others like they used to. And this is a massive problem for leaders. And that's why I say that the future currency of leadership is trust. And what I wanna do is show you very specifically how you create, build, and sustain trust of the people that you love and lead. It's a talk that's impacting our church, our leaders, and I know will impact you. I'd love to see you this year at the Global Leadership Summit. You will get better. And we know that everyone wins when the leader gets better. This is your last chance to book your tickets for the Global Leadership Summit happening this week Friday from 8.30 to 4.30 here at Harvest. You don't want to miss out. To book your ticket, please go to our website and click on the link under the events tab. Make sure to use your promo code GLS23HCU to get your Harvest discount. For those that have already booked your tickets, please make sure to bring your tickets with you for registration. That's all for this week's announcements. We hope you enjoy the rest of the meeting. Morning, everybody. I just uh, felt that I needed to come up when Azipa encouraged all of us who had called on the Lord and knew for sure that he had answered us and had blessed us with what we had asked him for. And Colin and I have a testimony of asking the Lord for children many years ago. And, uh, and we waited on him. And uh, it was a longer wait than we wanted it to be, but we waited and he answered our prayers. And I just felt that when we sang that song today, as Nazeeba encouraged those who had experienced it to be able to sing and to be able to lift up those that are waiting on the Lord, I wanted to ask anyone who is waiting on the Lord for children to come and meet with Cole oft and I afterwards because we can walk alongside you. We know what it's like, but we can testify that he is a faithful God and he answers our prayers. And one of your answers to prayer is writing matric finals this week. Eh? So we just pray for the matrics. Be praying for our matrics, please. We trust them for much grace, favor, and the Lord's wisdom to be on display through them as uh, uh, anyone here writing? Yeah, the Lord bless you guys. Lord bless you guys. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to hand over because they've just got some great testimonies. It's a takeover with uh, Young Life, bringing new life. So, Andrew, won't you come up? Andrew leads our youth space with a great team. Hello, Harvest. I'm so happy to be here, and this is just making me so happy. Um, so we just got back from a camp, um, which was just amazing. We were so blessed. 
Uh, we had about 90 people in total going to Camp Annerley, um, and we were so blessed. Warren was our guest speaker, and he was just incredible, um, so much more than a guest speaker in every way. So we were so blessed. Uh, we're excited that we have some testimonies that we'd like to share with you guys this morning, if that's all good. And um, I'm going to ask, we all know her, she is an absolute legend in this space. Um, I'm going to ask if Ali can come up first and if she can kind of share a little bit from the camp. I'm actually losing my voice from this morning, um, but good morning, Harvest. So, um, honestly, camp for me was honestly just one of the best weekends of my life. I felt Jesus move so incredibly in my life, and it was an honor and a privilege to witness all of our teens experience God in a brand new way. Some of them, uh, to see them so on fire for Jesus, so hungry to experience Him, so eager to seek His presence. Um, and to have encounters with him in, his, in their secret places, some for the very first time. Um, and when I asked some of the teenagers to explain camp in like a sentence or a word, the most popular answer was life-changing. And I think they couldn't have been more spot on. It was life-changing. <laughs> On the second night, we had the privilege of having Susie Tricky, who is a lady in this church. She's not here today, but she shared on not letting, um, like not changing our name, and that only Jesus can has the, uh, can change our identity. And she spoke about um, stepping out of our comfort zones, of not being afraid of what people think or say, and of getting over ourselves so that God can work through us. And something that she said really stood out to me, she said that God is redefining who we are. He's redefining his children. He is on the move, God is on the move. He was whispering new labels into our, into our teenagers' ears. Sarah spoke about there's no negative labels in the secret place, and I know some of the girls touched on that on Friday that they found that God gave them a new label. Some of them was courage. Some of them was, um, for mine, it was beloved. I'm God's beloved. And so, yeah, God was really on the move and he was re redefining who his children are. He was, I'm trying to think of the word, <laughs> but yeah, he was just redefining who we are. Um, and I think we can all agree, teenagers, that that was just the most incredible camp. So thank you. I must say, Ali has been the biggest blessing to the Young Life space. She has given so much of her time and her effort, all as a volunteer, and she, Jesus has used her in such an, an obvious way in changing so many people's lives in that camp. So, Ali, we love you. We appreciate you. We're so grateful for you. <coughs> um, I'm now going to ask, they don't know which order this is going to happen in. Can I, can I do it in the same order as last time? Tim, do you mind coming up? And Tim shared a little bit in the first service. Tim is such a legend. Um, Tim and his, his dad, Dave, um, live how, how far away? Uh, Queensboro. So. Queensboro. It's a bit of a drive. And every Friday, um, Tim and his dad make their way here. So if Dave's here, is Dave here? He's in the coffee shop. What a king. Like, what a legend. We're so grateful for your dad and for you, Tim, and that you can be here and that you're going to share with us this morning. Awesome. Thank you. Morning, guys. Awesome. Well, my name's Tim, or in the Young Life community, I'm known as Timmer. Yeah. Right, so I'm just going to share on my testimony and how I got to where I am today. Uh, so back in 2019, I lost my mom. Uh, then, yeah, it was quite uh, stressful and went through a strong stage of depression. And then I came to Young Life and I changed for the better. And then... Going to camp, I felt like I lost God a little bit. I felt like I was lo losing faith. But then the first night of worship, I got it uh, bawling. I won't lie. I was bawling. But it's a, I think it's a good thing that you cry for, for God. Yeah. It shows that you really love God. <laughs> and then... I was also a leader in that space as well. I was a den dad. I got to look after the grade sevens. I see a couple of them here today. Mitch, there you go, Mitch. And then, uh, yeah, and then uh, some, I'm going to end on some exciting news. Starting next year, 
I'm going to, me and my mates are going to be running our own youth at school. It will be on a Wednesday at second break, and we'll be sharing, I'll be sharing testimonies and Bible scriptures and maybe some worship if we can. And yeah, that's my testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Okay, I'm now going to call another legend in this space. Uh, some of you will recognize him, and if you've met him, you'll never forget him. That rhyme was unintentional. I'll take it though. Thank you. Um, uh, Reese, uh, do you mind coming up? Hello, church. Um, I'm Reese. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to share just a little bit of my testimony, but first a little bit of background also on myself. Um, I grew up Catholic all my life. Well, up until this point in my life. Um, <laughs> and like, I never really went to church or like read the Bible. Like, I knew about Jesus and all that, but it was, I didn't really strive for a relationship. So eventually I got introduced to Young Life at, I think, 2021, I got introduced to Young Life, and I started coming to Young Life. I didn't really know much about Jesus and things, so when the preachers happened, I'd listen, but like, I wasn't there, and when worship happened, I was like, I was there, but not really, you know, I'll sing along here and there, but yeah. So then I went on a few camps, I went on the first, my first camp ever being at Young Life, <laughs> um, and to describe the three camps I've been on, the first one was meeting God, second one was opening my eyes, and now this last one, um, now I'm going to share on, <laughs> was life-changing now. So coming to this camp. <laughs> okay, so coming to this camp now, um, I was going through a lot of mistakes in my life. I, my, like I was very far from the Lord, like my relationship was very iffy. So when I was coming to this camp, I was like, okay, Lord, what, what, why, why do you want me at this camp? Why do you want me? I was also a le going to be a leader of one of the groups on the camp. So I was like, also, I was asking the Lord getting closer and closer to the camp. Why do you want me with all my mistakes leading and being on this camp? And I didn't hear anything from him. Then I'm on Thursday comes, we have like a little like get together to form teams and like show how camp's going to go. And then on that Thursday, we had our quiet time. So we went in, I went to like quiet time. I wrote in my book, Lord, please turn my life around this camp. That's what I like want out of camp. So we get to Friday, get to the end of the day. So we go to the preachers and we go to worship. First song on worship, I start bawling my eyes out. I'll be honest. I was gone. <laughs> um, but I was like, okay, cool. The Lord's filling me up with the Holy Spirit. And I asked, okay, Lord, what's happening here? And the Lord, I felt his presence. And to just like describe it, he had his hand on my shoulder. And I was looking. I was like, I'm walking this way. He has his hand on my shoulder. And he's just like, okay, we're going this way now. That's it. And the Lord lit, figuratively, well, metaphorically and literally turned my life around in that moment in time. So what I want to like leave with you guys from that is that God's grace is just unlimited. His forgiveness, his love. Once he's just sitting there with open arms waiting for you to come there so he can bless you. And then the second thing is all those faults and mistakes and insecurities, you must own it. You must own that. And you must reveal it to God so he can heal it. Yeah. Yeah. So as I, as I end now, I just want to leave you guys with one scripture. Most of you may know it. It's Ephesians 2 verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Yeah. Oh, Reese, you are such a king. And also just to add on that, Reese was a, like a team captain, so there were four teams, and t um, um, Reese ran one of the teams and just did it with such an awesome energy. The kids, everyone just loved him. He's one of the most lovable guys we've ever met, such a king. Um, anyway, are you guys cool with it if we do a few more testimonies? Okay, I think we need a girl up here. Do you guys agree? Z. I couldn't speak more highly of Z if I tried to. Hey, my friend. Hello. 
Um, Z is, you've been at Young Life for, for over a year now, hey? And just such an example of a light, such a reflection of Jesus, honestly. Um, she, you're 15, 16? And just like such leadership over her life, you guys will just see it. Um, and she's just such a legend in the space. I'm so grateful that she's a part of the Young Life family. Here you go. See? Um, morning, everyone. Um, so for those that don't know me, my name is Ngosi. And I can definitely say after going to um, my second camp for Young Life, it was honestly, just like Ali said, life-changing. And it was so amazing to like witness people um, feel the touch of God and like just seeing them grow their relationship with God. Um, so a few things that I wanted to touch on that I experienced on camp is I walked into camp as a team captain for the Blue Tribe. And um, uh, in the second night during worship, I was talking to God and I was asking him because something that I've always been told my whole life is that, you know, every time you walk into a room, you light it up and, you know, it always makes me feel good. But then I was, <laughs> I was praying to God and I was asking him, um, what happens, like, how do I keep my light from not fading? Because, like, life is not easy and, like, sometimes it's hard to keep the light shining. And then in that moment, because usually I, my whole life I just accepted it. And then finally when I asked him, he, I, like, literally heard him and he said, you don't have to worry about being the light because I am the light inside of you. And I was just like, <laughs> um, so yeah, it was just very eye-opening. And I thought of Psalms 18 verse 28, and it says, you Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. And from that point on, my eyes have just been open and now I realize that if this resonates with you, you just have to remember, as long as you have God inside of you, you'll keep on shining because God's light never fades. It's everlasting and it's eternal. And then the last thing that I wanted to touch on is um, on the pre-session on Thursday, um, we had a little bit of quiet time. We were writing down the things that we wanted to like expect in camp. And I said that I really want God to use me for like words and pictures and like giving people because like my whole life I'd like get like three out of life for like a year and stuff. But then going into camp, I was praying into that. And during the whole camp, I got like seven words for different people. And ever since then, like after camp, it's so cool because I'd break it in our school. We sit together and we like come up with words and we like connect and it's just really amazing. And it was really crazy because I thought of the exact same verse that they said during worship. I read Psalm 34 verse 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. And I, I feel like people need to remember that every time you pray, you need to pray with faith and thanksgiving. And um, God answers your prayers when the time is right. He knows the plans he has for you and he'll answer them when the time is right. So with all that I've said, I'm very proud and very happy and very honored and excited to say that after church, I am getting baptized and I'm so ready to pursue the kingdom of God. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See what I mean? I mean, come on. What a legend. Oh, that is so beautiful. Thank you, Z. Um, I'm now going to ask, is there someone that I've left out or we're going to go on to? I'm now going to ask Brandy uh, if you can come and share a little with us. Hello, humans. Uh, yeah, I'm Brandy. Uh, I don't like being called, I don't like calling myself Brandy, but that's my name at youth. I'm Brandon. I've been at the Harvest my entire life. And uh, yeah, so just uh, what happened on camp for me and uh, well, pre-camp. Um, I got a lot of prophetic words from a lot of people. Marilyn was probably the biggest one and she basically just spoke to me the Monday before camp and she said, um, that I kind of need to be more obedient and step out and, and have more authority over life. And um, yeah, and then Andrew and I had a chat the night before and he was like, and I was telling him what Marilyn had said and he was like, bro, I got that exact thing for you. Like, and I was like, cool. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway, going into camp, um, it was really cool. I was like, I need to listen to this word because, um, like I said in the first service, when someone gives you a prophetic word, you're not just going to sit back and let it happen. Like, if you're called to be president, you're not going to be at home and just waiting for them to be like, 
president is now, boom, and you haven't done a thing. No, you have to actively pursue it, you know? And um, yeah, so we get on and I'm like, ha, so I'm like, Andrew, let me pray us onto the bus. Boom, we get on the bus. I'm like, Father God, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, and then just carrying on in camp, we arrive and it, the first night, we, um, it's in worship and the theme with everyone there was tears, you know, uh, which is, it's great. I love crying. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we then, um, I'm, I'm like, I'm praying and I'm like, sick God, use me. And then he's like, speak. And I said, I didn't mean that quick. <laughs> um, yeah, so... <laughs> So it was like on and, and then you start going to the negotiations with him. What about tomorrow night? Let me, you know? And uh, yeah, anyway, long story short, Warren's giving a word and what what and I go, hey bro, can I, can I get the mic there, please? And uh, yeah, so I then stepped into that position of authority, shout out Marilyn, and um, yeah, started speaking and you know once you start speaking you don't know what you want to speak about but he's like just speak and I'll give you the word so I'm still giving a scripture and then I start saying things don't know what I was saying but I was saying them um yeah and it was cool got hot Andrew was in the distance giving me a few winks and uh yeah and then later on during the the that evening he did a lot me in that evening um he's going he's like Brandon, I said, oh no. <laughs> He's like, I need you to sing me a song. I said no. I'll be honest. I said no. I said, there's lots of people on stage who can sing a song. Where's, the, where's Sarah and Tatiana? I said, they can sing. They can sing. And um, yeah, what happened was he was like, no, sing, sing the song. Go. So I go. I get up and I go to Titan. I said, God said I'm gonna sing a song. Can you sing it for me? <laughs> he said, No, I'm playing guitar, please. <laughs> so I go to Sarah and I'm like, Sarah? She's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, Can I borrow your mark, please? And she was like, What? I said, I'm gonna sing a song. <laughs> and anyway, so then I'm like stressing so much because. Brandon can't sing. As much as it's a, it's a gift among my entire family, he hit a skip button for, <laughs> for me. And um, yeah, so what happened was I went there and I said, hey peeps. And everyone went, woo, as they do at camp. And I said, I'm gonna sing a song. And that's when everyone went crazy. <sighs> Especially Josh. Josh is the biggest harp man at Harvest. He is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Brandon decided to sing. And it was, it was really sick. It opened up the space because um, I felt like God was, in a way, highlighted me to say, you don't have to be qualified to sing his praise. You don't have to do that. And it, it genuinely opened up the space for everyone because it just, like, everyone just sang out with, like, yeah, what they hearts out and everything. I think the, what happened was the boys filmed it <sighs> and they've asked it to be played. I, d I think it's in the back. Thank you. So, as you could tell, it wasn't that great. Um, but, yeah, I think just for camp, it was a, very much a highlight for me to step out and claim the authority that God speaks to me and that I need to listen and be obedient. And uh, just, it's, 
gone into my workspace as well where there was a lady at work and um, I'm not sure she's here. She, I spoke to her. She was keen to come. No. Um, anyway, uh, she was walking and I kind of got, God was like, tell her how lovely her hair looks. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, cool. So I was like, hey, T, did you like cut your hair? Because it looks great. And um, she was walking on a mission and she stopped and turned and she got like, really teary and she was like um yeah I did actually and you're the first person to actually notice and um she was like not even my husband noticed which is and she was like I'm actually really grateful because I think in that time she felt a little bit because it wasn't the best cut she said I thought it was great I was like (laughs) it's it's a brilliant haircut and she was like yeah there was a lot of tears because she didn't do it right but um, she was like, thank you, you've given me a lot of like self-confidence in that. So, um, yeah, and so just I quickly wanted to pray because I'm, I'm going on my comfort zone as well in praying. I asked Rich, Rich, tell me when to pray. Tell me, I'll go do it. Um, because there's a lot of prayer warriors in my life. My uncle Ryan being one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Father, I just thank you for just who you are and just what you do in our lives. And I just thank you that um, for every single one of us that when we go out to our day-to-day lives, that you'll just let us be obedient, help us be obedient, and just when you speak, we listen. And uh, yeah, and just the more that we do that, the more time we spend with him, the more we get to know him and hear his voice clearly. So yeah, thank you, Lord. Oh, this oak, you can just see why he does what he does, am I right? Like, he is just so crafted for this space. Um, Ray, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but just to highlight what Brandy's just done and what that represented, like, whenever we, whenever I'd come and share about camp or something like that, I'd say, Brandy, and he'd say, oh, no, 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 next time. And you can just see the authority that God stamps on this guy's life, and I just, I just so see you that from you, Brandon, and your obedience is beautiful, dude. It is so cool. And such an example. Um, So love you, dude. Thank you for doing that. Okay, do we have time for one more? The last one is from, yeah, I call him one of God's favorites. He is such a legend. And when we were discussing who's going to be the the guest speaker for camp, there were a few few names thrown around. And then we were like, Warren. And I was like, sign the contract. You know what I mean? It was just so obvious to us. He was just, he is just such a legend. And just, just personally in, in my life, Warren has been just such a blessing. Like Jesus has used Warren so evidently in my life with, with bringing clarity to things for me. Um, and I, I'm just so grateful that he was able to join us in camp. Um, and I think all of us can testify how much of a blessing he was there. Um, and even still, we, we just love you, Warren. So thank you. Here we go. Young Life, thank you for having me. What a privilege. Sorry if I, if I don't have a voice. Um, I was screaming at a television screen. Uh, <laughs> frustrated and uh, also in love with our country all at the same time last night, as I think many of us are. Well then for being a church, by the way, this morning. Um, <clears throat> I think um, the kingdom that we live in um, is an upside down kingdom where you arrive to give something, but you receive something. Um, it was just an absolute privilege to be a part of the camp. Um, I felt like I left being a part of something that God was doing with you guys just in a whole new space in my own world. So thank you for shattering a ceiling of my life. What an absolute pleasure. Um, And just the hunger, um, I think part of the testimony, apart from just how phenomenal, if you see these young leaders being raised up um, and how they lead, um, what God can do through you guys and what he did through you guys is because of who you are and the way you carry him and the way you lead people, the way you carry his heart. So what a privilege to see young leaders rising, taking their place. Brandy, class act, bro. Um, <clears throat> I, thanks for making sense this morning of what happened on camp because I was going, I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> I thought it was normal, but it was, uh, it was well done, bro. That was impressive. Um, but yeah, just what an absolute pleasure to be a part of it, to see God move in such a significant way. And I think just to honor the, the, the kids on the camp, I think the amount of kids I got to pray with 
um, where you were taking steps out and asking God to become real. Um, and the way he stepped into your world just was an absolute privilege to be a part of that. And just what a testimony of hunger. I wish there's a video of Sunday morning to see this youth camp literally bouncing um, you know, for probably about half an hour, an hour, just, just in the glory of God after sessions. Um, and just to also honor the other guys who did sessions, um, Ali, Sarah, um, Shah, um, there was a whole bunch of the, the team that shared across the camp, and I just got to hear kids, like, witness, like, after each session about how what you had shared had just touched their lives and transformed them, and it wasn't just one person, Sue Tricky on Saturday night was phenomenal, um, but just, yeah, thank you, I uh, felt like my life has changed, and I was a youth pastor 15 years ago now, um, when I was young and cool like Andrew, um, and, uh, yeah, just, there's something about youth on fire, and what a phenomenal word from Roseanne this morning for the house and for this community. Rose, that was, you went on camp, but you read that thing, yeah, just so beautifully. Um, and can I just say that the, the way that this young group of people worship God, they have the ability to transform lives. You bring freedom, you allow God to move in ways because of who you are and the way you carry him and the way you go after him. You, are, you set the stage for God to move, um, and you did it night after night and session after session. What a privilege to see it. What a privilege to be a part of it. Um, can I pray for you before you preach? Is that all right? Awesome. <clears throat> Lord, I want to thank you for a young man, but I want to thank you for a son in the house of God. I want to thank you for the man he has already become, and everything that you're doing in his life, and or his heart for you. I just want to thank you for a young man on fire for you, a, a young man who's living for you. And I just want to pray, Lord, that as he steps into this moment this morning, that he'd feel the full weight of your presence, of your anointing. We even just thank you, Lord, for your spirit as he rests upon him now. That he'd feel your freedom, that he'd feel empowered. And we thank you for a young man that is rising in stature and in authority, Lord. Thank you that you would just unleash him this morning on this community. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Warren. Thank you, Warren. <laughs> Yo, I am so excited to be here this morning. I mean, how awesome were those testimonies, guys? How good is God? Yo. Okay. Today I'm going to be sharing on the same preach that I did at camp, um, and that is um, the five ins of your quiet time and relationship with God. So sorry, I've skipped a slide. The Amazing Race for Secret Place, that was the theme for our camp. Um, and it was just about really encouraging um, our, our group of teenagers that the, your time with Jesus doesn't need to be limited to a Friday or a Sunday, but that you have full access to, his, um, to that relationship 24-7. And that's what we try to kind of focus on in this camp. And so my, my preach today is on the five ends, it will all make sense now, um, of quiet time and relationship with Jesus or with God. Um, and so can we go to the first slide? The first in is invitation. Invitation. So the first step towards growing in our quiet time with God is about acknowledging and accepting our invitation into that relationship. Jesus wants to walk with you on a daily basis, seeing you, seeing it for the free gift that it is with no dress code, free of performance, and expectations from him, just simply you. Revelation 3 verse 20 says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and, and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. The secret place is an environment where you're able to be with Jesus and enjoy his presence, to eat with him, to ask him questions, it's an opportunity to welcome him into your home. No matter what you've done or what you've been through, he is always, always knocking. Sometimes we can get stuck in the legalistic headspace where we feel like we don't deserve his love or his grace or his affection. Romans 6 verse 23 says, for the wages or the payment of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. We cannot earn his love. We can only receive it through Jesus. Jesus did all of the hard work for us. If we're trying to earn his love, 
it means that what Jesus did on the cross wasn't enough. And that's not true. Jesus was so much more than enough. He was perfection. You are worthy of a secret space or private time or a relationship with Jesus. No matter what mistakes you've made this week or last week or last year or your whole life. It's a space where Jesus listens and has an abundance of grace for our shortcomings. He's not some distant God. He wants relationship with us, just as we are here today. Not a future cleaned up version of ourselves. We've got all our ducks in order. He wants relationship today, just as you sit here. The second in is independence. There's so much power in independently choosing God for yourself. Not your family, not your friends. I really feel like spiritually something shifts inside of us when we choose Jesus for ourselves. I was brought up in this church my whole life by my amazing parents who are sitting here. What legends, yeah. Um, and I was also under Tracy, who's in kids' church, her, her leadership um, leading me as the, the kids' ministry pastor. Um, and I'm blessed to be a part of kids' ministry today. But there was a stage in my life when I was about 15 where, to be honest, I kind of stopped taking their word for it and had to try and figure it out and see it for myself to really believe it. He, Jesus loves that there's weight to that decision. He's got so much grace for that decision. The fact that there's weight means that it's that much more important. Jesus loved that I really spent time looking into that. If he, didn't, if he wanted us to earn our relationship, God would have never sent Jesus. If God didn't want relationship with us, he would have never sent Jesus. Jesus is the key to our relationship with God. If we look at Psalm 16, verse five and six, it says, my choice is you, God, first and only. And now I find I'm your choice. You set me up with a house and yard, and then you made me your heir. When we choose Jesus, we can finally see so clearly that he's chosen us for so long, that he's chosen us and it's only when we turn and face him that we can see that he's been just following us the whole way. When you choose Jesus for yourself, there's something so beautiful and empowering that often, that often makes us feel that much closer to Jesus. You're no longer seeing him through the eyes of your beautiful mother or your legend of a father. You're seeing him for yourself. You're no longer seeing him through the eyes of your spouse or your Christian friends. You're seeing him for yourself, and he's so beautiful. Are we ready for in number three? Okay, intentionality. I'm speaking to myself here when I ask, are we being intentional with our time with Jesus? Are you crafting time, creating time for this relationship? If you guys don't mind, I'm gonna tell a little story. So my beautiful girlfriend, Amy, was here in the first service, and I embarrassed her then but I'm gonna share on her now. Um, whenever I see the word relationship, I instantly think of Ames. And um, Amy and I's relationship started a while ago in this church where I was kind of seeing her and thinking she is beautiful. And I'd like to think she thought the same. <laughs> um, and one day she went to her mom, Tracy, and said, mom, could we ask the Suttons if they would join us for lunch? And you gotta respect it, guys, am I right? You love it when the lady makes the first move, amen? Thank you very much. I'm just teasing. Um, and so, so Tracy said, yes, of course, let me go and chat the Suttons. And it was in this church, Tracy came to my folks, I'd imagine, said something like, we're going to the driving range for lunch, we'd love it if you and your family could join us. Unfortunately, we already had plans that day. I know, but we serve a good God, amen? And plans were changed. <laughs> and we last minute decided, you know what, the, we can't do that anymore. Why don't we just go to lunch with the Dawsons? And I sat next to 
the beautiful Amy Lee Dawson, and I showered her in compliments. And I walked out of that room. Julia was sitting next to me in Ames, and I said, Jubes, there's something special about that girl. And it was from then on that I was incredibly intentional with that relationship. That if Ames had a test on the Tuesday, you can be damn sure that Tuesday morning, 10 to 7, good luck for that test today. Do you know what I mean? 10.30, how'd the test go? You know what I mean? If Amy was frustrated by something, I had all the time in the world to listen to her. Could help make plans and change things. I was so intentional with that relationship, pursuing that relationship. And there's been so much beauty that has come out of that relationship in my life. So the question is, are we seeking Jesus and our relationship with Jesus with the same intentionality? It's in the everyday, it's in the mundane. It doesn't have to be alone in the corner of your bed with a Bible open. Are you seeing Jesus in your everyday life? If you've experienced the Holy Spirit, you have access to that 24 seven. He is with you forever. In Acts 17 verse 28, it says, for in him we live and move and have our being. So what are our intentions with Jesus? Now after a weekend or a time where we saw Jesus so clearly at camp, um, it can be very easy to see Jesus in all of this. So are we having our relationship as we only see Jesus when it's easy to see him? And then as soon as things go bad, we think, where are you? Please, come. And there's frustration in that. Or is it the opposite way around, that when we need Jesus, we're saying, Jesus, I need you. Please come into my life. Help me. And then as soon as we step out of that space and he's helped us, we go, thank you. I should be good for now. Do you know what I mean? There's a story that my dad told me a few years ago that I loved. And it's about this person who's driving around in a car park. And they've been driving around for five minutes looking for a parking. And eventually she says, Jesus, please, can you help me find a parking? And she turns the corner and there's a parking. And she says, don't stress, I actually found one. Don't, don't even worry about it. <laughs> so are we only seeing Jesus when we need him? Or is our relationship and our sight of Jesus consistent? Are we ready for the fourth in? Okay. Next one is in spite of. We can all agree that making time for God doesn't really just accidentally happen. Your flesh, the world, the devil, other people are always trying to distract you from your time with Jesus. The enemy is constantly looking to get in your way of your relationship with God. But we have full authority to put the enemy right back in his place. I think Brandy and I have found our authority to put the enemy back in, his, back in his place this year. It can be the simple things like phones, lack of sleep, being super busy, feeling a little bit lazy. That's what I wrote for camp. And then I added these for you guys. Kids. <laughs> Work. Can't relate, however, I'm, I hope to one day. It's not always gonna be easy to spend time with him. We can all agree. But Jesus holds so much grace for us, guys. He is so understanding. We don't need to hold ourselves to unattainable standards, but I think we should still try and pursue this relationship with such intentionality. The fifth and final in is intimacy. We have an intimate relationship with Jesus that is available to us 24-7. The Bible calls our relationship with Jesus a marriage, where he's the husband and we the church are his wife. Intimacy happens when it's one-on-one. -on -one. There's so much to gain and learn from being alone with Jesus. For me, it's in the shower and it's in my car. I think um, there's something so sincere. Chris Olsen, I think he's here. Um, we were talking on camp the night before my preach, and he spoke about the word sincere, and I just fell in love with that word again. I hadn't heard it in a little while. And I just love the idea of a sincere relationship with Jesus. 
And I think that when we're worshiping together, there's something so powerful that happens. But when we're worshiping in our car alone where no one can see, there's something just as powerful about that. So as I come to an end, my prayer for us in this next season is that we all grow closer to Jesus through our own unique secret place. That Jesus is going to empower us as a community with words of encouragement for each other, prophetic pictures, songs, poems, and a heart for worship and a deeper understanding of his love. There's a legend named Izzy Cox who's sitting over there. And Izzy, uh, I've, she's just such a legend. I've, I think Izzy in some ways has also stepped into her authority in this last season. Um, and Izzy came up to me before camp. She's an amazing artist. Uh, Anna de Flech was here earlier. And she's, Anna has been such a legend. But Izzy is just so, so, so prophetic with her art. Um, for my birthdays for the last two years, Izzy and a lot of people um, have had this. Izzy and Ali and Shai get together and they pray for a picture for the person. And they draw a picture and write a beautiful message that they feel God's putting on their heart for the person. And it is just so beautiful and such an awesome example of how God wants to talk to us. I'm such a visual person. And so it's one thing when someone says, I've got a picture for you, does this make sense? But when they can illustrate it so beautifully, it just means that much more. And Izzy wanted that for camp, which I love. And she said, could we try and find a way to get some art things there so people could, one, bring glory to God through art, like Anna does so beautifully, like Izzy does, like so many of us do. And then secondly, can we give pictures to people on camp? Like, what a champion. I just love that perspective. And um, we were so blessed by Harvest and we were able to buy some paint and some paint brushes and some little canvases that people could go and have their own quiet time, bringing glory to God through art, and then also giving pictures to each other. Izzy and Maddie and Angie, who are also here, legends, um, took time to paint and put together some pictures, and they just said, if you resonate with that picture, it's yours. I mean, how beautiful is that? And um, we were able to do that, and there were so many pictures that were taken, and, and a couple of people had painted other pictures for each other, but that's what I mean by the, the other space that we had was for writing during worship. So I've gone a little bit off here, but I just loved this. Um, people could, could write words for each other. They could write poems. They could write songs if they wanted to. We had a little dedicated corner for people who wanted to write things, people who wanted to draw, and then there was another section with just a chill area where you could just rest, and you could just find rest and worship. Anyway, so I thought that was very cool. So in conclusion, that we will get a deeper understanding of his love, that we will accept his invitation, independently choose him as our Lord and Savior, intentionally grow, intentionally allow him to enter our mundane as we create opportunities for quiet time, that in spite of our circumstances, we continue to draw near to him, and finally, at finding his intimacy will forever be the amazing race to our secret place. Thank you, guys. Thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Can I, just, can I just pray us, can I just pray, pray for us quickly? Thank you, Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this, this morning, that you're here, Father, that you're present, that you're just craving intimacy with each and every single one of us. Thank you that you love us all so deeply, Father, that we're all so important to you, that you're so good. Thank you, Jesus, for all the lives that were changed on camp, Father. I just wanna honor the people who are stepping out today and getting baptized. What a beautiful thing. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just pray that just as we end this, this year, we'll, we'll find a brand new relationship with you, Father. That we'll see you even in the most boring of mundanes that you're so present there, Father. That we'll just feel you holding us so tightly whenever we're feeling like there's things going on that don't reflect who you are, Father that we'll just feel your love, that our families will feel your love, Father. Help us choose you independently every single day, Father. We're so conscious of you, Jesus. 
thank you for the camp and the favor you gave us. Thank you for Warren and how you used him in this camp, Father. Thank you for all of the leadership who stepped up and just said, how can I serve you, Father? And we just pray that this is not, is not a weekend, Father. Rich gave a word before um, that it's not a moment, it's a movement. And I just declare now that this camp was not a moment just for Young Life, but it's a movement for this church. That Young Life is gonna come out of this camp for all ages. New life, a new found identity in you, Father. That where there's been shame and where there's been guilt, that's just all erased. Thank you, Father. I just pray now that as we go into the baptisms, that you just be so present there, Father, that we just feel you so tangibly in the rain, Father. Come and pour on us, Father. We love you so deeply. We see you so clearly. We're so grateful for you. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for being with us. Amen.